which side of humerus so there is a smooth portion yes that is known as the head of the humerus which should be superiorly as well as medially so it helps into the side determination two points are covered into the side determination it is a superiorly also as well as it is a medially then uh, okay then if i want to try and to put on the left side i can also put on the left side here also head is superiorly and medially but what is the main key point that is the this fossa that is known as the ole crenon fossa which should be posterior so this humerus is a which side of humerus it is the right side of the humerus okay fine now external features first head then this portion that is known as the anatomical neck ana anatomical neck then remember there are two tubercles here one which is the smaller and another which is the larger so the their name is given lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle what are those tubercle lesser tubercle and the greater and between them there is one groove and that groove is known as the intertubercular groove yes the, it is it, that groove is between the two tubercles one that is the lesser another that is the greater and the, that is one groove that is known as the intertubercular groove that is also known as the bicipital groove because from here there is a long head of the biceps is passing from here yes and that groove is having the two lips that is one known as the medial lip and another known that is the lateral lip lip yes two lips medial lip and the lateral because this portion is the medial side this is the lateral side the lateral lip okay fine then as the tubercles are ending we we wind round our uh, finger and that neck becomes the surgical neck of the humerus so humerus is having a two necks one that is a anatomical neck and another that is known as the surgical neck yes from here there is a axillary nerve is winding round okay fine let's discuss uh, the lower end on to the lower end remember these two things one from medial side and another that is the lateral side these two are known as the epicondyles so this epicondyle is known as the medial epicondyle of the humerus and this epicondyle is known as the lateral epicondyle of the humerus now remember another two things this portion and this this portion is known as the trochlea and this portion is known as the capitulum that is a one elevation that is known as the capitulum this fossa is known as the ole crenon fossa so that in that the uh, ulna is articulated yes that is known as the ole crenon process of the ulna which is uh, articulating with the ole crenon fossa and that's how it forms a joint and uh, that can move like this so it works like a pulley that's why it is known as the trochlea and here it is known as the trochlear notch the so trochlear notch ole crenon process ole crenon process onto the ole crenon fossa and trochlea notch onto the trochlea and that's how it's possible now onto the capitulum the head of the humerus is articulating the head of the humerus is articulating it is having a slight depression so it is articulating that is a slight depression that is articulating onto this portion right there so it forms a elbow okay fine now there are two another fossa that you have to remember when we do the flexion this coronoid process comes onto one fossa that's why it is known as the coronoid fossa which is this fossa coronoid fossa and uh, during the flexion this radius is coming here that's why it is known as the radial fossa let's revise fast this is a ole crenon fossa this is a coronoid fossa this is the radial fossa two things uh, trochlea capitulum another two things uh, medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle let's revise fast ole crenon process onto the ole crenon fossa trochlear notch onto the trochlea and coronoid process comes onto the coronoid fossa then uh, radial head onto the capitulum during the flexion it comes onto the radial fossa fine now onto the shaft if we see onto the shaft we have one that is known as the medial border 
another that is known as the lateral border and another considered as the anterior border and with the help of that let's revise fast this is the medial here that is the lateral and here that will be the anterior border with the help of that we can divide into the three surfaces one that is here that is known as the medial surface another that is this side that is known as the lateral surface and posterior side that is the posterior surface fine three borders medial lateral anterior three surfaces medial surface lateral surface and the posterior surface let's discuss uh, attachment over the humerus four main muscles should be remember onto the superior part onto the lesser tubercle there is a subscapularis which muscle subscapularis yes which is uh, coming from which portion it is coming from this uh, portion subscapular fossa it is attaching onto the this portion yes subscapularis then onto the greater tubercle remember three muscles supraspinatus infraspinatus and teres minor four muscles one here that is the subscapularis three here so there are the supraspinatus infraspinatus and teres minor these are the four muscles which are forming a rotator cuff right so they are not uh, going from the inferior side they are attaching from the anterior superior and posterior side okay fine now remember three muscles group here onto the intertubercular sulcus lady between two major that means in between there is a latissimus dorsi but onto the lateral lip there is a pectoralis major and onto the medial lip there is a teres major students do the mistake here they speak uh, onto the medial there is a pectoralis and onto the lateral there is a teres but remember onto the medial lip there is a teres major and onto the lateral lip that is the pectoralis major fine and remember one important muscle onto the lateral surface there is a v shaped tuberosity and on that tuberosity there is a one muscle that is known as the deltoid muscle this muscle deltoid onto the lateral portion deltoid tuberosity yes now onto the this portion there is a one muscle that is known as the brachialis which muscle brachialis let's revise fast onto this portion there is a subscapularis supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor latissimus dorsi teres major pectoralis major and deltoid here there will be the brachialis now remember three muscles as i have just remembered in a group here there will be the coracobrachialis here there is a brachialis now to this portion there is a brachioradialis coracobrachialis brachialis and here there will be the brachioradialis okay fine now remember the muscles onto the medial epicondyle there are a common origin of the flexor muscles of the forearm that's why it is known as the common flexor origin yes and onto the lateral side that is known as the common extensor origin so here there will be the common flexor origin common flexor muscles and here there will be the extensor muscles on the superior part that is the brachioradialis because that portion is also known as the supracondylar lines that is lateral and here there will be the medial clear now on to the posterior surface if we see this is the medial end this is side lateral on to the medial to lateral there is a one groove is there and that groove is known as the radial groove because from here the radial now is passing on that radial groove upper part and the lower part upper part there is a origin of the lateral head of the triceps and lower part there is a origin of the medial head of the triceps yes remember there are three heads of the triceps one that is on to the uh, scapula and two on to the humerus and on to the humerus it is having the lateral head and the medial head clear so let's do the revision of all the muscles attachment on to the humerus on to the lesser tubercle sub scapularis greater tubercle supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor on to the bicipital groove medial lip teres major between latissimus dorsi lateral pectoralis major on to the deltoid tuberosity deltoid on to the medial part here there will be the coraco brachialis here there will be brachialis and here there will be the brachioradialis 
on to the medial epicondyle common flexor origin on to the lateral epicondyle common extensor origin on to the posterior surface radial groove upper part lateral head of triceps and lower part medial head of the triceps thank you